Welcome to our session today on student presentation online um, tools and strategies. Our presentation today will be approximately 45 minutes long and it'll be followed by some time uh, to ask questions and answers. Uh, so um, I want to ask you guys to, if you possibly can just to hold off on, on questions you might just want to write them down uh, so that we can be sure to get through all of the content. Now we're, we're also recording the session obviously I just turned it on uh, to allow you to watch it again if you want to. Uh, the recordings will be posted uh, on our YouTube page and it'll be linked to our Keeping Teaching workshop page. Um, now to access the recordings you would navigate to the uh, workshop page and then click on the workshop recordings tab to see a list of available workshops. I will be sending you the links to all of these things so don't worry about not having them right now. Uh, it, it should be fine. Okay. Um, let's see. Mm. So um, presentations are a great way for students to demonstrate that their understanding and their concepts uh, of, of concepts covered in your courses. Now there are a wide variety of tools that uh, you you want to use to facilitate student presentations online. And in this workshop, I'm going to share an overview of some of the tools and strategies for students uh, for student presentations in online courses. I think all of you are familiar with me. I'm Dan Cabrera, the multimedia coordinator in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning here at NIU. Uh, and I'll be a presenter for today's workshop. I have a doctorate and a master's degree in public health and I've been teaching in higher education for more than 25 years uh, for both graduates and undergraduate students and in an online format in some ways since about 1999. Uh, I've been with Siddle since 2002 teaching faculty and instructors pedagogical applications of technology. In addition to conducting workshops like the one I'm doing now, I also have one-on-one -on -one consultations and I think I've done them for all of you and I've create, I created documentation for our departmental website, much of it about Blackboard, uh, in, uh, which is a, our LMS. If you have any questions uh, during the session, as I mentioned previously, I want to ask you to just hold on till the end of the presentations and I will answer them for you during the question and answer period. All right, now let's get started. Let's, uh, let's get started by sharing some brief introductions. Um, uh, would you please answer the questions in the text chat area? Now we're all familiar with that. Uh, let, let us know your department, uh, where you're joining us from. Are you on campus? Are you at home in DeKalb, in, in Schaumburg or wherever? And how you plan to use students, uh, student presentations in your online course. Now I'm going to allow some time for people to post their answers to the questions displayed in the screen in, this chat bo uh, in the chat box. All right, so just click on the chat box and then just share that information. Yes, I'm from, well, now for, uh, for you, you, you're kind of sort of midway between uh, uh, the, the current, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Alicia. Your current department and your new department. So I would just say put your new department. That would be fine. I mean, uh, your current department, I should say. Okay. So we're getting some feedback here already. Um, Alicia is from the Center for Nonprofit and NGO Studies. Uh, she's teaching undergraduate capstones, so we're going to be doing online presentations for those capstones this semester. And uh, Alicia, I, uh, I, w I was probably you're just doing this all online, so yes, absolutely. To create their um, uh, their online presentations or their presentations, yes, that would be great. Uh, this, uh, today's discussion would be great to give you some ideas on how they might be able to, to create those online presentations. And Sims uh, is from the International Training Office. She's joining us from her home um, and she uh, she wants to use this with training programs. Excellent. As a matter of fact, I think that's that's what a lot of folks use. In fact, I just got off the uh, email with a gentleman who uh, is responsible for the commercial card program and we developed a training program so that all NIU students, uh, NIU students, NIU employees who have to use the uh, the commercial card, the one card, will be able to do that. And so I think uh, it's a great use of the technology. Uh, Yuna is a professor of hospitality and tourism uh, management. Uh, and she's uh, coming to us from her home in Geneva and she wants to do online group project presentations. That's great. As a matter of fact, Yuna, uh, as, uh, I actually use it in my own courses for groups, uh, group presentations. Um, 
every every fall semester. Uh, Joe, hi Joe, this is Dan Cabrera. Welcome to the session today. Um, I'm glad you made it. Uh, right now, what we're, do we're doing is we're just answering questions about who we are. So if, if you're familiar with the um, Collaborate interface, you want to click on the on the tr purple tab on the bottom, and then click on that first icon, which looks like a bubble, and it's the chat area. So I'm just asking folks to share their departments and their universities, uh, well, what department they're from. Um, if you're joining us from um, campus, or if you're calling us, or you're, you're coming in from your your home, and how you plan to use student presentations in your online course. Uh, now, if you want to use the microphone, this goes for anybody. Please raise your hand and and wait for me to call on your name before you unmute your microphones and speak. Um, that may or may not be necessary. I think most of us have provided that information already. All right, thank you. Um, now, asking students to raise their hand uh, before engaging the microphone is to speak. Uh, is a best practice when teaching an online course because raising your hand keeps the discussion organized and and clear for the participants who are attending and then those who may not have attended uh, and are viewing the recording late uh, later on. All right, so this is just an example of best practices of of raising your hand, that little little icon of what looks like a, a half of a body, a torso, uh, with what looks like their arm extended. Okay. Anyway, uh, thank you for sharing your backgrounds and your goals for this workshop. Okay, let's just see one more time. All right, so let's advance now. Now, during this session, uh, we will discuss why uh, you might have students present in your online class. Obviously, obviously you you've, you guys have given me some more ideas. Uh, we'll also discuss several tools that are available for students to use uh, when presenting in your online courses. Now, there really are a lot of tools that are available for presenting in an online course. Obviously, we can't give you an, uh, a, a comprehensive listing of those because not only uh, uh, there are some I'm not aware of, but we couldn't possibly support them. So we're just going to focus on the ones that we do have uh, at least some level of support for, um, and then uh, some others which have support on their own websites. So today we're going to focus on an overview of tools in which our center has resources uh, curated. And they're located in the Keep Teaching, Keep Learning, and Flexible Learning websites. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be sharing those links with you later on um, in a follow-up email. And uh, these are important websites because they ensure that faculty and students can get up and running as quickly as possible. And I know that if you, if you want to have students do online presentations uh, this semester, you want to have access to that as, 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 as soon as you can. Now, I'm going to mention other uh, tools uh, that may be used for online presentations that have some support resources available on their own website, as I previously mentioned. Now, today's session is designed to provide an overview of a range of tools and options for presenting online rather than a step-by-step -step instructions for how to use the various tools. Obviously, uh, each tool can have its own workshop dedicated just for that. So we don't really have time for that, but I, w I won't leave you hanging. I'll, I'll give you, uh, give you uh, links so that you can learn how to do it. Or you can just contact me after the session, and I'll do a one-on-one uh, one -on -one consultation for you. Now, after we review the, uh, review the tools, we'll have a question and answer uh, session, as I mentioned before. So during that time, uh, you'll have an opportunity to raise your hand and engage and ask questions. If you, uh, so if you please hold the questions until the until the very end, I'd really appreciate that. We, we should have plenty of time for questions and answers. When I send the follow-up email after the session, as I mentioned, I'll include the links to the resources for the tools that we discuss to provide more specific information on how to use them. So first, let's consider why you might want to have students present in your online courses. So, well, now during the introductions, a number of you shared reasons for asking students to present in your online courses. Uh, a number of reasons that you shared were possibly maybe, well, active learning instructional techniques. It's a great, great uh, uh, approach to teaching. Active learning is one example of a reason why you might want to ask students to present online. So active learning is an important pedagogical concept that really helps students uh, helps support students learning. 
Now, when students are actively engaged in the course, they're more likely to remember the information uh, that they're learning and learn it at a much deeper level. They're also more likely uh, to, to um, recall that information when tested. Active learning also helps motivate students to continue to engage in the online course because they feel involved. They're having fun. They're, their interest is stimulated and they're motivated to learn and they're accomplishing tasks such as presenting their knowledge uh, to other students and the instructor. Engagement in an online course can occur both synchronously and asynchronously. Now when the instructor and students are in the same uh, online space at the same time, the teaching and learning are occurring synchronously and that's what's happening right now with, with, with everyone here. Now alternatively, when the instructor and the students are in the course at different times, the teaching and learning are occurring asynchronously. Now while sharing your introductions, several of you mentioned that you plan to have students present to share their knowledge in the online uh, community. Now student presentations could be designed as a formative assessment to gauge students' levels of understanding while they're learning the materials and the concepts. So it's pretty much early on in, in the process. Formative assessments provide the instructor the opportunity to clarify misunderstandings and to share more detail or clarification while the students are learning course concepts. Presentations could also be designed as a summative assessment, which are higher stakes assessments and definitely worth more points. Summative assessments are typically conducted at the end of a significant portion of the course, such as the midterm exam, final exam, or major uh, course assignments. Presentations also help foster the development of a learning community in online courses. This is so important. The last thing you want is a student who feels isolated, who feels unconnected to the course community, to the content, uh, to, to the people, to the students and the professor. For example, a presentation, uh, presentations uh, honors students' individual voices by providing them an opportunity to share their unique perspectives with the entire learning community. Presentations also help students connect with others from, from diverse backgrounds and different life perspectives when discussing the concepts shared in the presentations. When students are presenting and discussing information, they're also constructing knowledge with their peers, which helps them consider the course concepts from perspectives beyond their own individual points of view. So they hear from another, uh, another student presenting on something and they'll say, well, I didn't think of that. Well, what do you, what do you know? <laughs> okay. Right. So these are all important rationales for having students present online. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning has developed and posted many resources to support faculty and students in our Keep Teaching, Keep Learning, and Flexible Learning websites. Today, uh, we're going to take a broad look at some of the web conferencing tools, uh, discussion, video authoring, and screencasting tools. We'll also look at a couple of other tools that are built into Blackboard Learning, the Blackboard Learning Management System, which connect with uh, resources on our main Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning homepage. And lastly, uh, I'm going to be touching on some tools that are available on the web that students might be comfortable using to create presentations for, the, for their online courses. Now, this is really important, as our students may be aware of other options that we as instructors may not be, and that. I include myself in that uh, in that area. Now let's take a look at web conferencing tools. Now web conferencing tools uh, can be used for students to present in your online courses. Uh, web conferencing systems include a, a full range of tools to support online synchronous meetings. Web conferencing uh, sessions can be recorded and made available to your students. In fact, that's one of the great benefits of having these web conferencing tools is that it just doesn't happen once. You can go back and you can re-listen to something. Uh, for somebody who was actually in the session, great. You can clarify something. If someone someone wasn't there in a the session for whatever reason, they had maybe a technical difficulty, they can actually, after the fact, go and listen to the recordings. And these recordings are available uh, at least for the uh, collaborate uh, uh, Blackboard Collaborate, they're available in the course um, and they're particularly useful if the students are assigned to respond to student presentations or they want to review the material after the synchronous session uh, has ended uh, and they want some time to reflect on information that was shared in the session and so when they post on it, it's, pro it's a more developed, uh, more robust 
response to uh, maybe somebody's presentation. Now, recordings also support students who may not have been able to attend the session, as I've mentioned, or experience some sort of technical glitch. Um, and it may be a re result of uh, maybe just a current high demand on systems uh, that's occurring everywhere. Uh, the Blackboard Collaborate system is a web conferencing system that we're currently using right now. Now, students could use the Collaborate system to present to the entire class or present information in breakout rooms. Uh, it's one of my favorite tools, breakout rooms. It actually allows us to, to separate a larger class and have more one-to-one -one or a much smaller uh, setting for people to share information to discuss things. Um, students can present and interact in real time and they can deliver the presentation to the entire class. And I think this is important in real time because you can get immediate feedback. You can get that, that direct sense of communication where someone can ask a question and, and you as the instructor or a student presenting can respond to that. Now, students can share their audio, their video, text, whiteboard, computer screens, um, content, and applications. And as I mentioned, these sessions can be recorded and they are available in the Blackboard course. Um, in fact, there are several workshop recordings that explain how to use Blackboard Collaborate uh, on our Keep Teaching website. And that's one of the, the links that I will share with you through the, uh, after the session. An upcoming feature uh, in Collaborate is the increase of student video tools, the student, uh, student gallery views. Uh, I believe that will be in the April May release, which uh, if we all had our webcams on we could probably all see each other I think it might depend on on the browser but when these updates come we could see up to up to 12 thumbnails per page so you could have a maximum of three pages so probably so potentially uh, up to 30 more than 30 maybe 36 uh, video thumbnails of your students and, and I know that for some uh, departments including I, I believe it was one of the departments in the College of Business uh, a few years ago was asking me who's using collaborate if uh, if we could have the, the tiles of videos the video tiles uh, shared of the class and I mentioned that there is that limitation um, however we don't see the limitation with some of the others that I'm about to talk about um, and so uh, I think Collaborate is responding to that need um, and dem indeed demand uh, from users. So that's really nice. Now, speaking of other web conferencing alternatives, Web Teams, uh, Microsoft, I should say, Microsoft Teams is another web conferencing tool that can be used for synchronous online presentations. Teams is integrated with Microsoft Office, a suite of applications. Uh, it's often used by employees to send text messages to each other. We do this all day long, my, my colleagues and I. In fact, I think we probably communicate more effectively in a remote setting than we did face-to-face -face where we'd have to get out, up out of our chair, walk to another person's office, which may be on an, another side of the building or the other side of the building, and then and discuss that. So this, is, I think, is more efficient anyway. Um, but there is a uh, synchronous online web conferencing feature that can be used by students to present. Uh, students can share their video and their audio, the text chat, uh, PowerPoint, and a whiteboard in the Teams app. The desktop can also be shared using Microsoft Teams. Uh, the range of resources to support those who want to use Microsoft Teams is also available on the Keep Teaching and the uh, Division of in Information Technology websites. The team application can be loaded on your desktop, laptop, or your mobile device. And it doesn't require logging into Blackboard course to access the tool. Uh, this is a consideration if you're looking for an option that you want to use outside of Blackboard, uh, a Blackboard course. Um, if you do want to do it in, in a Blackboard course, the, the instructor has to put the team's meeting information into the course. One of the nice things that I like about uh, Microsoft Teams is that there's auto transcription. Uh, which is fantastic. Uh, there is uh, an ability for a transcriber in Blackboard Collaborate to come in and, and, and in real time uh, do the transcription of what's being said. Uh, however, it's not an automated process. Uh, Microsoft uh, Teams does have, a, have an auto uh, transcription service. Um, and it also has a maximum viewer in the student gallery, uh, I think up to up to 50, uh, 50 tiles. So you can see up to 50 students. 
which is still going to be better than than what Collaborate offers uh, when they when they update. Although I think they will con they will continue to improve on that number. Collaborate is always trying to to update. Uh, and they have monthly updates. Um, regarding Microsoft Teams, you join by creating the Microsoft Teams meeting, and then you share the link in in your Blackboard course. Uh, things that, uh, that are about to change in the near future with Microsoft Meeting Recordings is that they're migrating from Microsoft Steam to OneDrive and SharePoint. Uh, so it'll be a different location for you to access those um, recordings. Zoom is yet another popular web conferencing tool that became available to the NIU community recently. Uh, there's a partial integration with Blackboard. Uh, you can create meetings and share meeting ID and password from a Blackboard course. I would not recommend sharing the link if, if you're talking about having students in the course. Just share that, that information. Actually, what you want to do is you want to have students log in uh, into the app uh, using their, uh, their uh, login and their password so that it will recognize them as being authenticated users. All right, then that's really important. Rather than just giving them the link, it doesn't know who they are. Um, but by having them put in that, that login information, uh, password and all that stuff, uh, meeting, meeting ID, when they're logging in, it says, hey, yeah, we recognize who you are. Now, there's a maximum viewer uh, um, view in the student gallery, I think up to 50 students as well. Um, so once again, we recommend that people who are using Zoom do it in the Zoom portal uh, or the desktop, uh, desktop application. I want to share some tips for using uh, web conferencing. Now, due to the increase, the significant increase in current demand uh, on all web-based tools, you might want to limit the use of video and audio if there are concerns about bandwidth. And in fact, whenever I have my students doing presentations, I always recommend that um, that they use uh, internet connection, uh, an Ethernet connection, uh, rather than a Wi-Fi connection. And if that's all they have. To make sure that their device or their computer is right by that router so that they get the strongest possible signal uh, for bandwidth. Um, now, communication with students can be conducted in the text chat area. Um, so, and that's important for, for people who are observing, observing the, uh, the presentation and, and want to be able to respond to that rather than having their turning on the webcam and turning on their, their uh, microphone. They can just type something in. I, I think a push comes to shove, they can use their microphone and all that, but you really want to preserve the, the bandwidth uh, so that there are no challenges. Now, when a student is presenting, uh, you can ask the rest of the class to keep their microphones muted and the video turned off. And students can still use the text chat to ask questions and share ideas and engage in the presentation. Now, you can see in web conferencing, there's a variety of different ways that, tool, uh, that the tools can be used to engage and support active learning and address the various types of technologies that students ha have available in their home. Some people don't really have, um, what is the new convention, the AC convention for uh, for Wi-Fi, which, which has a much higher gigabyte uh, capability. Um, I, I have that, in fact, I have, I have this, you know, this, this AC uh, router, I, I think it's 1900. And I, I can do things in the basement that's just two stories below. So that, that's quite remarkable. But not all, not all people, not, no, not all faculty, and not, certainly not all students have that capability. I want to ask you to be patient with your students um, because the students and faculty are all, may all be learning some new tools. So kindness, patience, and encouragement really go a long way to help students feel comfortable and confident in using this new technology. Um, now, the dial-in option may be the only way a student can access the web conferencing uh, uh, due to their equipment. Um, so consider options when creating an assignment. Think about the requirements for students and the purpose of having them present online. So you might want to ask yourself, could the presentation be recorded and then posted in, in the course for others to comment at a later date rather than requiring all students to be online for a synchronous session? An important consideration. So flexibility is also important to allow students to complete assignments at different times rather than requiring all students to be, you know, like we're all here in the same session simultaneously or synchronously. Uh, it may not be realistic due to many competing demands uh, in addition to the technology, demands on, on the students' times and demands on web conferencing tools during this high usage period. 
So options, adaptability, and flexibility are key to allowing students to fulfill course requirements to support their success and to address the other responsibilities that may have significantly increased due to global pandemic, such as you know, maybe they have children and their children are not able to, to go to, to daycare or their children may not be able to go to school and so now they have to be uh, taken care of at home. It's a very challenging time for, for everyone. Synchronous online sessions may not be as realistic for some students due to their current situations. All right. I also want to to bring this up here. It's, it's it's an article that came out uh, a few weeks ago. It's called Zoom. Uh, it's on Zoom fatigue, and that's simply how people are now interacting with each other in in web conferencing. It's not limited to just Zoom, but it, just to give you an an idea for those individuals who have their webcams uh, on. It's as if they're the presenter because everyone can see you. Every little move that you make, maybe even scratching your nose or whatever it happens to be, you feel that you're on, you know, on stage, even though you might not even be presenting at that particular moment. So that's also a consideration. People will, you know, will just be tired of of, of being on all the time. So patience, uh, kindness, encouragement—they go a long way. Ah, one of my favorite tools. All right, discussions. Another way that students can present online is by using a discussion tool such as Flipgrid. I think maybe one of you or more I may have I may have worked with you on using this. It's a great tool. Flipgrid can foster interactions between you and your students by allowing students to record themselves in a video format. By the way, when I'm done with this portion of this, I'm going to do uh, you know the. Uh, the lecture portion of this, I'm going to show you some examples of, of what that looks like. Um, Flipgrid can foster the interactions between you and your students and by and between each other by allowing students to record themselves in a video format. Uh, and video, I think, is, is a, a little bit richer um, a media to use for communication rather than, than just text and maybe even just audio. Students can sh then share their recording either with you alone or with the entire class. And when I want to help foster a sense of community, I really want them to share with the entire class. So Flipgrid can be a catalyst for a multimedia dialogue in your online course. It's a great tool for that. Some instructors report that students who tended to be shy in face-to-face uh, -face settings, they, they perk up uh, in front of a camera, become more expressive and comfortable contributing to class discussions. So an example of, of the uh, this impact tool, uh, such as uh, Flipgrid, was evident in an educational technology course that a colleague of mine taught a few years ago, Yvonne. Now she began the course with a few different options for students to share their knowledge, including typical course assignments such as online discussion boards or written assignments, blogs, and a journal. But about four weeks into the course, one of her colleagues, I think it was me, <laughs> mentioned a new video discussion tool. Well, it was new to me. Uh, she let students know that this new tool is available for them to share in the discussion board if they wanted to try this video tool. One of the students who had been posting minimal con uh, content in the course decided to try the video tool. Now, this, uh, this uh, submissions that he uploaded using uh, Flipgrid were creative and engaging, fun, and addressed all the requirements for the assignments. Other students enjoyed the video discussions uh, shared by their colleague and some of them even began using the tool as well. Now the key here was options. This discussion came alive in the online course and students' voices were amplified. Now my colleague reports that it was great to see that the engagement and the assignment emerge as the course progressed. The Flipgrid tool allows users to either record with their webcams or import a video file that they have already recorded. Great options. I wanted to mention that uh, I'm uh, in the second semester, uh, um, participating as a facilitator slash instructor in the UNIV 595 uh, course. With the, this is like a 190. Uh, this is like a UNIV 101 course for graduate students for teaching online. And uh, the assignment that we have uh, next week is a multimedia assignment in which um, they'll, they're asked to create short multimedia presentations or a micro lecture. In fact, we asked, asked them to imagine that they're creating a lecture for, for a class that they teach. Uh, this could be, because a, a lot of them are GAs, 
or TAs, I should say. Now, this could be the first time that students are learning uh, a particular concept, or it could be a review of conceptual students, uh, a, a concept that students in their classes find difficult. So there are many tools out there to use to record a micro lecture, and in the assignment, I say, uh, you know, you, you know, if you have some in mind already that you are familiar with, you might want to uh, try them out here. But I also recommend uh, using PowerPoint or Kaltura Capture or Flipgrid, uh, which, you, which we were talking about, or something I'll be talking about in just a minute, VoiceThread. So there are a number of different options. I think it's the more options that, that students uh, are, are aware of uh, or may not be aware of. Um, but there are also, regardless of whatever tool that they decide to use, uh, there are a few principles that I'm asking them to to keep in mind. Uh, I want them to teach something subst substantive, but short. So I want them to aim for three to eight minutes, um, and no longer no longer than ten minutes, uh, to follow best practices from the readings uh, in the chapter that these these uh, graduate students are uh, being assigned to. And the images in the video should be clear, but not distracting. So you want to avoid extraneous or unrelated graphics to the content. And the audio should be clear. It should minimize uh, black uh, background noises and make sure that you're close enough to your microphone so that uh, it, your voice can be heard. All right, video authoring tools. That's another option that students can use to present in an online course. Um, these tools provide students the opportunity to record original content and create quickly create their own media to present in an online course. Now, VoiceThread is an online platform that allows you to put digital media such as images and video and audio and documents uh, at the center of an asynchronous conversation. So what you're doing is you're recording something that you can that can be shared later on uh, at whatever time people want as opposed to having it in real time. Now, VoiceThread allows people to contribute to discussions using a keyboard, a microphone, a webcam, a telephone, or uploaded audio file. So there are a number of different options that people can use in putting media uh, uh, into a uh, presentation. Now, VoiceThread, with VoiceThread, students can upload their PowerPoint slides to VoiceThread and then record audio over them. Now, you can also do this in within, uh, within uh, PowerPoint itself. Uh, there are some challenges. I, you know, I've heard that for folks using using PowerPoint, but but using um, it in um, Apple uh, uh, o, uh, OS um, is a little is a little challenging. Um, uh, some things may not appear that that, uh, that that should appear, such as where do I put the narration? How do I turn on the the audio? Um, now. Let's see. So, uh, regarding VoiceThread you know, and using PowerPoints, they would upload the the PowerPoints uh, and then record audio over them. Then they would share the VoiceThread uh, with you and the classmates asynchronously. Okay. Now, there's no synchronous option for VoiceThread; it has to be done after the fact. Now, to use this option for assessments, you would use uh, VoiceThread's graded option. There's an assignments feature. In fact, I just did a blog article on the new update features in the assignment uh, feature of VoiceThread. Pretty, it's very, very cool. Um, so when you're setting up the uh, the VoiceThread graded option, you want to check the box to enable evaluation and then you use the assignment builder to, record, to require that students um, uh, create their own VoiceThread. And VoiceThread video authoring tool can, be, can help support active learning as well, engagement in the course, and humanize the environment because students are sharing their original content and their voice in the online learning community. VoiceThread can also, also includes an auto-caption feature. Yay! <laughs> Keep in mind that auto-captions are helpful, but they're not perfect, and they're not immediate. You may have to wait a day or so. This is why it's, it's, it's asynchronous. You, know, you, you, you record it, and then you wait for it to, to process. Now, you want to be sure to review the audio captions and revise them uh, as needed to ensure accuracy. And I know that there are some fields that have certain, um, that have certain uh, I guess, uh, terminology and it may not be accurate. Okay. Screencasting tools are other examples uh, of video authoring uh, platforms. Screencasting, I used to use screencasting, it allows users to record anything on their screens with the audio and the webcam to create information and to engage software. 
Okay. So let me just advance here. Now, other tools that can be used for students to present online courses include Blackboard portfolios and the whiteboard available in the Blackboard Collaborate video web conferencing system. The Blackboard portfolio tool uh, provides a way of students to create an electronic portfolio that can be shared with the instructor, uh, colleagues in a course, or outside the university even. The portfolio can also be designed to include examples of students' work in a project, uh, in a course, in a program of study, or examples of why uh, assignments that were created in their ent entire time at NIU, which is fantastic. Okay. Kaltura is another tool that students can use to record presentations. They can record any material that happens on the screen, such as you know, running a PowerPoint presentation, a Word document, which is really nice if you want to uh, re record while you're uh, reviewing somebody's paper. It says, in this, in this paragraph, you leave out this or you have this or whatever. Uh, you can also record any software programs and narrate while you're presenting. And of course, obviously, a, 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 an important one would, would be PowerPoint. So the user will be narrating audio while presenting, so they should have a microphone and a webcam if they want to share their, their video image. Uh, the Kaltura tool also includes an auto caption of uh, recording, which is great. Um, again, you want to be sure that auto caption, to review the auto caption and revise them to ensure accuracy. Uh, there are workshop recordings on our Keep Teaching website to instruct students and faculty on how to use the Kaltura tools. I will share, once again, I will share those links uh, afterwards. Uh, now, there are many other tools available that students can use to present online. Students may be familiar with tools that you simply have no experience using, uh, which is understandable. So be flexible and consider letting students use tools that are they're comfortable with if the tools can be incorporated with your online course. Now, remember, to keep it simple and encourage the use of tools that do not require extensive training, equipment, or resources, i.e., a cost. Uh, you may contact our team for advice, and we're help, happy to help you. Uh, an example here, I mean, we have YouTube, which is free, Adobe Spark. I don't know if there's a fee associated with that, or Prezi. Uh, Prezi has been around for a while. It always gives me uh, seasickness or dizziness <laughs> whenever I watch that like that, but it's pretty cool. Instagram, TikTok, Google Hangouts, these are all great tools that can be used to uh, to have students do presentations, to create presentations. Uh, now, we've discussed web conferencing, video authoring, screencasting, recording, portfolios, and other tools that students can use to present in their online courses. Uh, uh, during this still dynamic and uncertain time we're currently experiencing, it's important to think about uh, synchronous sessions conducting using web conferencing and how they're handled. For example, Due to other priorities such as shelter in place, and students may not be able to participate in the synchronous session in the same way that they were able to participate in the past. As we've mentioned uh, in other Keep Teaching workshops, it's important to be flexible and kind and, and, and uh, patient and open to options to support student success. Now, there are many other options for student presentations. As I mentioned previously, Blackboard Collaborate is, and Microsoft Teams and Google Hangouts and, and even Microsoft PowerPoint. But whatever method you use, you want to be sure to consider the resources that are available to help you and your students learn how to use the tool. Also, you want to make sure that there are ways to make materials accessible to the class through the recordings. For instance, Kaltura and VoiceThread both auto caption recordings. Uh, YouTube also offers auto captions, kind of, sort of, not the best, <laughs> um, but auto caption recordings are not perfect, so keep in mind that you and your students will need to check for accuracy. Uh, you'll need, if you need any information, uh, any more information on them, these options, you can co contact uh, me or one of my colleagues uh, and we'll help you learn more about it. If you have a student with an accommodation letter from the Disability Resource Center, you may also contact the DERC for support and resources to help the student. Also contact the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning. We're also happy to help. One more thing I'd like to share is it's regarding to virtual presentations. This is a brief video presentation, uh, less than five minutes, that provides a great collection of tips for online uh, presentations. It was created by a colleague of mine, Jennifer Howard, uh, and I'd like to share just a small portion of it for your benefit. I'd also like to share the URL so that you can review it at your leisure. I'll do that in an email. So right now we're going to take a, a slight deviation 
Um, I'm going to share this. Let's see. Uh, where is that? Here we go. That's creating effect. Uh, and now I'm going to share this. I found it very engaging. Okay. And once again, I'm just going to share just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Here we go. All right. Can everyone see this? Just uh, raise your hand, your hand or put something in the chat area. All right. Here we go. Oops. Hold on. Just wanted to make sure that I was seeing that. Okay. Great. Great. Let's try this again. Whether virtual or in person, there are three steps to an effective online group presentation, planning, preparation, and practice. The planning phase is designed to establish clear goals, team guidelines and responsibilities, and identify the method of group communication. In this phase, you will select a team leader. This person will be responsible for keeping everyone on track. Discuss the topic and or the assignment. Make sure everyone has the same understanding of what needs to be communicated and how you will deliver your content. Establish roles and responsibilities. Clearly defining these will alleviate any miscommunication within the team. A meeting schedule or project timeline. This will provide the framework for moving the project along. Finally, create a team agreement to lay out a path for conflict resolution if it is necessary. Okay, I just wanted to share that. Like, I found that it's only five minutes, and once again, I'll, I'll share that link uh, so that you can view it at your convenience. I'm just going to come back to our presentation here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So many resources have been posted on the Keep Teaching website to support faculty. I want you to, to check out the, the site for strategies that you can use to support your, uh, your success and student success in your remote teaching. Now, scenarios are, also, are, are included to help you think about approaches that may be appropriate for your discipline and needs. Uh, there's also workshop recordings and frequently asked questions are, are also available on the website. A Keep Teaching site is also available to support students transition to remote teaching and learning. You can find tips and resources for success learning uh, online using this evolving <laughs> COVID-19 situation. Actually, uh, it will be one year, I believe, next Tuesday that we went all remote, um, uh, including some, uh, including the latest updates for technology access and online learning tips. And flexible teaching. Flexible teaching is an approach to course design and, and delivery that really helps students to learn and succeed in any mode, whether it's face-to-face, -face, online, or, or maybe some hybrid. It has a number of guides, this website, to begin developing your flexible course. It has a guide to course design. This, this uh, course design process involves intentional and deliberate uh, planning in order to create a course that best supports students in any format. We have a guide for course materials. Uh, so when, when teaching in a flexible environment, the course materials often needs to be rethought and expanded to ensure that all students can have access. For instance, I have a, uh, an accessible syllabus, and that's something that uh, was designed for people who are, uh, for faculty who attend our online course, Design Academy. It's a great tool like this. Now, I feel, I feel at ease when students uh, who may actually have a, um, a, a uh, disability, a visual disability, can now rely on screen readers to, uh, readers to, to be able to go through the, um, the course syllabus. It's also helpful for people uh, of all uh, uh, abilities uh, because it also includes a navigation menu on the left-hand side so they can access. It's almost like a table of contents. They can jump to a portion of the, uh, of the syllabus directly rather than having to scroll down there. And finally, a guide to course delivery. And, and when choosing the appropriate technologies for your course, uh, it can be a challenging process. So it takes time to identify what tools will be most effective and to be able to master them. Okay. 
And there's also a host of featured resources, including eight strategies to prevent teacher burnout. Oh, we all need that. Recommendations to increase student engagement in online courses and research-based online teaching principles for success. Uh, this, this is a great web, website right here, Learning Technology. It's a great uh, website because it contains links to a collection of technologies at NIU fa uh, that fa NIU faculty and, and students have access to. And it includes the things that we mentioned and some that we didn't get along to around to, such as Blackboard, Blackboard Collaborate, Office 365, Microsoft Teams, Kaltura, VoiceThread, Flipgrid, LinkedIn Learning, uh, Turning Point, uh, well, I'm, I'm, you can see it for yourself right here. So once again, I'll be sending you a link to this right here so you can visit that website and learn a little bit more about some of these technologies that we talked about, some of the software programs. Uh, so please let us know uh, how we can help. There are several ways to connect with the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning uh, team uh, for the transition to remote learning if you're still, if you're uh, teaching and learning support, if you still need it. You can call us, you can leave a voice ma a mail, uh, an email, you can schedule a time to meet virtually with us. We are experienced and excited to help you op have the opportunity to support your success and as well as the uh, success of your students. So don't hesitate to contact us as we have a lot of resources that are already developed and will save you and your students time. Uh, there's no need to recreate resources that are already available. All right, so at this point, I'd like to ask, um, other questions. What questions do you have? I should say probably more accurately. So if you want to raise your hands or just put something in the chat message, I'll be happy to respond to your, your inquiries. Okay, I'm not seeing anyone yet. Really, no questions. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys are thinking of questions. I do want to share some of those other websites uh, that I had mentioned before. So I'm going to stop sharing this, and I'm going to share. I'll come back to see if you have any questions. Oh, well, you're welcome, Alicia. Let's see. Let me see. This one. Okay. So wait for it to pop up. So this is VoiceThread, it's one of my favorite ones. Um, and this is a very brief uh, presentation. Actually, it's a presentation that I created for students, but students also participate. This is a voice of why I like VoiceThread. They can add their comments. And so here, I'll, I'll start on mine. This is simply an attempt to, uh, for accountability for, for group projects. And so I have students do a, when or actually a team project, a weekly status report. So this is the first slide that they see, and this, this is for Module 9 or the ninth week of the semester. Greetings, everyone. You are in... Oops, I'm sorry about that. Here the we go. correct location to post your team weekly status report. You'll have an opportunity to share the status of your team case study analysis assignment every week until you complete the assignment. That is, develop a case study or story rich with detail and credibility. Okay. So that's me just talking with them, uh, and this is somebody's response. Hello, I am Brittany. All right, <laughs> I should actually. I have permission from uh, uh, a lot of my high achieving students to use their material, but still, I, I will preserve their uh, anonymity. Okay, this is another one. This is Flipgrid actually, and in Flipgrid, I'm asking people to um, to introduce themselves to the community. I'll just have a little bit of what I'm asking them to do. Here we go. Greetings. Since our course will be conducted entirely online, we won't have an opportunity to sit together in a physical classroom. Therefore, I'd like you to introduce yourself to me and to your classmates. All right. So there I am asking them. And then right here, we have a listing of all the people in my class who responded to that. Uh, I did ask them to comment with each other's uh, comment if they, if they felt the need. There was only one person, Lila, commented on somebody else's uh, posting like this. So this goes a long way in developing a sense of community since we never actually physically gather. Um, but, uh, uh, it, you know, this is an opportunity for people to present something online. Uh, in this case right here, it's just presenting a video like this, but but uh, they may just have a discussion. They're looking at the webcam, and it's important to look at the webcam and not 
everywhere else uh, to give uh, people an opportunity to um, to share material uh, and uh, and ideas. Let's see. Uh, here's a, a web a web page. This is a, um, for folks who want to be able to create a um, uh, narrated PowerPoint presentation. This is asynchronous, obviously. Kaltura Capture is an excellent tool like this. This is one of the links I'll be sharing with you that provides you sort of instructions on how to do that. Uh, also, somewhere there is a, uh, I'll be sending you a link to a web, uh, a workshop in which people, uh, in which the instru the uh, one of my colleagues walks through the steps of actually doing that, recording something. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing at this point. Uh, uh, any questions come up while I was sharing that? Okay, I'm not seeing anything. I'm going to stop uh, recording.